Have you ever wondered how to shrug off things that don't go your way and then take advantage of them so that you can become awesome? That's what we'll talk about today. And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. John Steinbeck. Today, we're going to talk about a book by Neil Pasrika called You Are Awesome, How to Navigate Change, Wrestle with Failure, and Live an Intentional Life. It's about a whole new mindset that will turn the bad things that happen to your life into good things, or at least things that give you value. It's a way of reframing things so that they work in your favor. First point is having unfinished sentences. And he says the best thing you can do is add a dot, dot, dot after everything. Well, I didn't exercise today and I really should have. Or I didn't exercise today, dot, dot, dot. What it means is that sentence isn't over. Now you can add to the sentence, but I'm going to tomorrow. And that way, when you've added the dot, 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 and you keep going with your sentence and not ending it in a failure, you suddenly feel better about it. And you also have a plan of how you're going to make that thing work. Problem in our lives are the fact that we keep ending sentences. I didn't get the promotion, dot, dot, dot. But I'll work harder on it next time. See how that goes? It really makes the whole thing better. He says, if you don't like the dot, 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 you can also say yet. Wow, I didn't exercise yet. Now I have the whole rest of my time to exercise. It's no longer a sentence of defeat. Just by putting the word yet at the end makes the sentence magic. It now allows us to add to it. It's no longer a negative sentence, I didn't, and I can't, and I won't. It's now a positive sentence, yet. I didn't get my promotion, yet. It takes the negativity out of the sentence we were going to say, and we declare that there's more to it. We're not failing. It just hasn't happened yet. This problem when we have this negative self-talk, it really hurts us in a lot of ways. It makes us feel like we're doing terrible. We worry that other people at our work maybe think we aren't pulling our weight. And nobody walks around in their lives trying to do the wrong thing, feel awful about the things in their life. That self-talk just puts us into the bad corner. So the question is, is how can we turn around that thinking so that it actually improves what it is we think about ourselves and what we think that other people are thinking about us? He says that our mind, when we're having this negative self-talk, can really damage us. But when we have things that go against what we thought we wanted to do, when we had plans and they didn't go the way we wanted to, we make them into even bigger problems. He says we bigify them. We catastrophize them. And it makes us feel like everyone's eyes are on us, that we're embarrassed, that this is a real nightmare. But what if that isn't the right way to look at it? And what if people aren't looking at us in that way? We think we're being judged. We think that everyone's laughing at us, but it's not necessarily true. There was a study by Jason Kruger at the University of Illinois at Urbana. There was a video game. And what he showed in this study is that people who were playing the game thought that the other people around them were actually being noticed by the people who are watching the game. It means that for all the times that we think people are watching us when we're screwing up, that it just eats away at us, that it makes us feel like we have all this anxiety because everyone's watching us. And the truth of the matter is that most people don't actually really care about what we're doing. They are absorbed in what they're doing. It's important to know that people really aren't paying attention or not putting the spotlight, he says, on us. When we fail, we think everyone is thinking about us and it's just not true. So his next step is to stop thinking this way. It's important to really remember that it is egotistical to think that everyone thinks about you. He builds this together. The first thing we do is we add a dot, 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 and maybe even add a yet to the thought. But then the second step, he says, is to shift that spotlight. We think the spotlight's on us. It's not on us. People, again, are not paying attention to that. We're making ourselves the center of everything. So when we realize we screw up and we realize the spotlight really is not on us, 
it can drop that anxiety, it can drop that embarrassment and help us move on. And then the third step, he says, is to see whatever got screwed up, whatever was a failure as a step. It's a step towards your future. If you tried to do something and it completely failed, now you know how not to do it the next time. You've just learned a lesson. Or maybe you have to reevaluate the goals that you're looking at because maybe they're just not possible in the way that you're thinking about them. But if you think of this mistake or this negative piece that happened to you as a learning experience and reframe it as that, it will make you feel that the loss is better because now you've gained something from it. You gain some trust in yourself because you were able to identify that what you tried didn't work. You came up with maybe some plans and how to make it work better the next time. You realize that you learned a lot from it. And now you have to believe in yourself so that you can go on to the next attempt or the next thing you're going to try with that understanding that you learned something and you're going to get back on track with that. He says the problem is, is that our brain convinces us that we can see what's around corners, that we know what's coming next, that we believe that when we screwed up or something didn't happen the way that we thought it was supposed to happen, that we know, oh, this is going to work the next time, or this is what's going to happen the next time I try it, that we know what's going to happen in the next few minutes. And the problem is, is that we can't see what he says up the staircase. We can imagine what we think is coming next, but we really don't know. And oftentimes he said that in studies, we don't believe that a lot of things are going to change for us in the future. Even if we see that our past selves learned a lot, changed a lot, improved a great deal, we don't believe a lot of times that our future self will do that. He said that imagine a 30-year-old guy is telling the story of his life and how there was all this turmoil and all these things happened to him. But then when they tell the next 10 years of what their life is going to be like, we think that it's going to be smooth sailing, that there's not going to be challenges that are there, that not much is really going to change. We know that that's not true. There's always going to be change. And there's always going to be things that are both successes and obstacles. It's going to be as turbulent, probably, as it was in the past. But you know that you handled it so far and you know you're going to handle it in the future, too. And sometimes when we have these bad things that happen to us and we think about them maybe happening in the future, we'll think, well, if I lost my job, I might never get a job again. Or if I broke up with my boyfriend, I'm never going to meet anybody else. And that's just not true. We realize that even in the face of all these adverse things that are going to happen to us in the future, we handled them in the past. We're going to handle them in the future. There's going to be a new job and a new boyfriend. And we shouldn't get stuck in thinking that all of this is going to end up in a negative way. We have this illusion where we think everything wild and exciting and good and bad happened to us in our past and is not going to happen to us in the future. But we need to see the rest of the staircase when we get there to understand what's coming next. And we'll be ready for it because we have climbed that far. He kind of gives examples that really what happens is our future is not about destroying everything that happened in our past and then recreating them into something new. It's about actually taking what happened in the past and building it into our future. We incorporate things. He gives the examples that cities didn't destroy farms. They just incorporated the farms in a more efficient way. We grow more food than ever now and we have less farmland. How is that possible? because we found a way of making things more efficient. Have this rational brain that thinks when things stop working or things don't go in the way we thought it will, that we're losing something when in fact we're actually gaining something that's better, more efficient, and easier for us to use. He said that the important thing is to realize that there's no you that doesn't incorporate the good and the bad that happened in our past. It made us who we are today. And likewise, there's no us in the future that hasn't already included all the things that happened to us in our past. I think about it in terms of my turbulent growing up. It was hard for me when I was a kid and having this kind of unsteadiness when it came to things in my family when it came to in the town I lived in. But you know what? It made me who I am today. Would I have had the job I had today 
if I didn't need customer service skills to deal with my family in a better way? Would I be that person who's resilient and tries all sorts of different things if I didn't have so many disappointing moments when I was a kid? Those all turned into me. And I'm not saying that bad times or hard times are great. I'm just saying they build us into what we are. We should see that all the things that happened to us in our past or maybe are happening to us right now as a step and try to tell a different story about it. It isn't that I failed at this project. I learned something about what works and what doesn't work. It's really when we come face to face with those fears and those thoughts about how horrible something is, when we realize that those are the things that make us who we are. Those are the things that tell us how to stop screwing those things up. That's where we're learning lessons. That's where we're becoming a more resilient person. And that's how we get out of the hole we kind of dug ourselves into. Then there's an aspect, too, of just even being grateful for the things that happened to you, even if they weren't great. Despite the fact I had a very turbulent childhood, my parents did care for me. They helped me get an education and get to school every day. I had food on the table and I had a place to live. So while it wasn't always the healthiest environment to be in, a lot of things went right. They cared about me, even if they struggled to care for me in the best possible way. So how can we keep telling ourselves and reminding ourselves that this is actually built into us, a part of us, and our disappointments of the past, our disappointments of the present are all building us into something new, something better than it was before. And the good thing about it is that it's not always easy whenever you have some sort of a disappointment or something that doesn't make you feel awesome. But you know what? It gets better. You start realizing in so many ways, this is going to prepare you for a better future. You realize that there's not a lot of things that you can do about the bad things that happen in your life. But what you can change is the story that you tell yourself. It's about getting past the initial facts of the problem. I could just walk around in my life and say, I had a rotten childhood. I had an unstable childhood and I was afraid much of the time during my childhood. Or I can understand that I had two very hurt people raise me and they did the best job that they could. And even in the face of all the instability, I got the things I needed to become a successful adult. That's not just a good thing about me. It's a good thing about them too. And that whole story then reframes itself into realizing that everyone's flawed, that everyone has problems, and that there's a good story there, even if it feels like it's a really bad story. And take that into mind, even in the things that are going wrong right now. If something fails, if your project fails, if you got into a huge fight in your family or your relationship, or something that you were hoping was going to happen isn't going to happen, it's time to ask yourself if you're really gaining experience at something that you didn't expect to gain experience in, or if these experiences are going to help you do better the next time this kind of thing happens, or are you learning something on it? I think we tend to see something bad happening in our lives and we throw it aside like we are afraid that it's going to contaminate our lives and stay with us. But can we sit with it a bit and actually learn the experiences that we're facing instead of having anxiety about it? Can we analyze it in such a way that we get even more out of it? And he said that sometimes you can look at something that didn't go right in your life is that your ambitions exceeded your abilities. And we think, oh, well, I just wanted something I'm not good at, or I wanted something I wasn't ready for. Whatever it is, we give that story to us. The real story is you wanted something for yourself that was hard and you tried to go after it. You were courageous. You wanted something better for yourself. And that means that you're learning, that you're growing. And when you fail, the next time you're going to learn something more. That's rewriting or reframing the story. It will help you become awesome. So he said the next step is that we have to move through failure to real success. And we do that by, first of all, building resilience, knowing that when we fail at something, we got to keep going. If it makes sense to keep going on that. A lot of things that we have in life that look like failures 
are actually a loss that is required to happen in order for you to have a win. Instead, what we have to do is take those flops and be honest about them. Count them as a learning success. Count them as something that is a stepstone on the way to you being successful. By reframing those things, it's going to show us that we're going to be able to build ourselves up. And he says, get all the way up to awesome. Summary. Instead of being anxious about your life, become ready to make changes. Two, become failure proof and figure out how you're going to accomplish all the things that you want to and what you're going to do if these things don't go through. Three, use his magic words in a sentence. Remember, at any sentence, you can say dot, dot, dot. And once we do that, That sentence helps us take that sting of negativity out of the thing that didn't go right with you. Four, move the spotlight. You think everyone's looking at you. You think everyone notices what you're doing and what's going wrong in your life. But to be honest, nobody is. Five, see anything that is a failure or didn't go the way you hoped it would as a step. What did you learn from it? How is this going to help you do better in the future? Six, understand that you can't see the future. You don't know what's behind the next bend, but you got here into this place in your life from a combination of the successes and the failures you've had in your life. And you're going to continue to grow in the future with also more successes and more failures. And because you were able to handle them in the past, You will handle them better in the future. You can be grateful for things that don't go right, that they are going to make you better in the past, that there are things that did go right, even though it looks like a lot of things went wrong. Focus on the things that made you who you are today and then tell a different story about it. Tell a positive story about it. Seven, remember that when you have failures, oftentimes it's a sign that you really want to change that you really want to do something new and you picked a big goal. Take those steps of learning and figure out how you can actually accomplish the things you wanted, even if it didn't work out right the last time. Pat yourself on the back that you took on a challenge that was hard to do. Challenge, try reframing a story. Think about something that you've always considered to be a negative in your past. Then try to reframe the story to think about what went right instead. And now for our fun entertainment advice of the week. This one comes from Kung Fu Panda 3. You are too concerned with what was and what will be. There's a saying, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Yes, the present is a gift. And if you look up who originated this quote, it's not Disney. Some say it's Bill Keen. Some say it's Joan Rivers. It's probably not Bill Keen or Joan Rivers, but I guess it's one of those things that's so true, you can't even find the first person who said this quote. All right, everybody, thanks so much. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. And if you have any feedback from me, go to smallstepspod.com and leave feedback on the contact page. Have a great week.